15, 6.30, I'll call the meeting to order and just do a roll. Renee? I'm here, Brett. Okay, thank you. Mary? I'm here. Jack, I know you're there, but you can say here. On me. Here. And I'm also here. And um, like I mentioned, uh, Mr. Flaherty uh, called me. He has a family conflict. He can't be with us tonight. And I assume Mr. Unix is with us. I'm here, Brad. Okay, thank you, Mr. Unix. Okay. Um, again, we'll dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we have no appointments or resignation. We have, uh, under licenses and permits, we have a, uh, an all alcoholic license to be used at the uh, Everett Leonard Park, um, August 29th, I believe it was. August 29th for uh, Cheryl Rose, and it's for a party from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. for approximately 150 people, and it'll be uh, either dispensing or bringing your own booze. Uh, we have it signed off by the fire and the police, and unless anyone has any questions, hopefully we'll be up and running and people can can get together, but uh, other than that, if there's no other questions, she would obtain a motion to approve the application. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, thank you. Brad, I do have one question. Yes. Are we going to put this, I believe we did another one that was conditional based on uh, whatever the guidance is at the time? Yeah, I, I think that that's the only, I mean, I can't imagine town Properties being open if the uh, the state is not allowing uh, groups of more than whatever it is at that time. So I would say uh, conditional on the opening of uh, public facilities. That's all right. We'll use that as a friendly amendment. And in that okay. case, uh, how do we yes. track that? How do we track that? Mm -hmm. To be very honest, I'm not really sure. I would assume that uh, when we uh, issue the uh, license itself, we could put that on there and maybe put a phone number for them to call, get clearance. Mr. Units, would you have any idea the best way to handle that? And I know, um, I believe Sharon Rice is on the call uh, tonight too. And yeah, I'm, I'm, sure, right. I'm sure that Sharon will be giving uh, anybody that uh, has a license, a list of protocols to follow. If um, we are allowed to have the event, uh, she'll also provide them with that list of protocols. Yes, that's the plan. Like, um, it's, right now it's a moving target, but assuming these events move forward, um, they'll need to sign a list, uh, you know, a, uh, an agreement that said that they, they will adhere to whatever the guidelines are at that time, and I just spelled them out for them. And, and I imagine that the guidelines will have some sort of a uh, um, number of, of persons in it. Um, should we make that, Brad, also a, a condition? Well, I don't know if we have to put a condition of the number right now, but... No, no just saying, just like to the point of conditional and public facilities being open and um, the guidelines allowing whatever number of people they're planning. Cause I, don't, I don't know on the license if it says how many people, right? No, it doesn't. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not a usual question we would ask, but just just to make sure. Like, if it goes from 10 to 20 and they have 50 people coming, right, they, they need to, to Sharon's point, they need to adhere to that. But I just want to make sure that it's documented. Okay. That's what I kind of, I guess I implied that by they would have to meet the conditions at that time, or restrictions that are in place at that time. And if the restrictions happen to be a, a number of people, or, that will be part of what I send them to. It will be spelled out once we know. Right now, it's a little too squishy to know anything. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sharon. You're welcome. Other questions? If not, we'll go to the roll call. Renee? Yes. Mary? 
Yeah. Jack? Yes. You know, yes. Okay. Uh, announcements. I personally didn't have any announcements in my packet. I'm not sure if you have any, Jack? None that I see. Does anyone have any announcements? Not hearing any, we'll move on to uh, new business and an update on the uh, COVID-19. Um, Chris Zahner is on the line, and Chris can give us an update on the status right now in Norton. Sure. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so right now we are at a total of 148 cases, um, 127 of which are on the road to recovery. And uh, currently we are sadly at five total deaths in town. Um, I did look back and since the last meeting, we've only gotten two more cases. Um, so that's a good thing. Case, cases are going down. Um, some of the other things we've been doing with, with regards to uh, COVID is we've installed the virus and germ shields at Town Hall. Uh, we've supplied them for the library as well as in the process of assisting the senior center and the schools with their virus shields. Um, I've coordinated the cleaning company to disinfect, uh, do the disinfecting fog treatment at Town Hall <coughs> and uh, Senior Center on a weekly basis, and that would begin, um, uh, let me see here, June, June 5th, uh, which is the Friday before we, we hope to open back up again. We're still stocking up as much as possible on PPEs and sanitizers. Um, Nima is backing off on the supplying of PPEs, so my my free PPE uh, avenue is disappearing, and I, we're going to have to start using some of the funding. Um, so I'm now reaching out to the vendors for that. Uh, but we've 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 stocked up quite a bit with masks and um, sanitizer, uh, coveralls, face shields, um, and that. So we're doing pretty well. Um, I've been working with the library and the schools and the council and agent on their pre-opening plans um, and assist them with the PP when possible. Um, the library is, is not yet cleared to open during this phase, uh, but they're being uh, they're very proactive and putting their plans together so when they can, uh, they'll be ready. Uh, the schools are looking to open up their administration offices um, very soon. I think I think you said next week, right, Mike? Yeah, June 1st. Yep. Um, and then they eventually they have to be able to allow the kids to come in and empty out their lockers or pick up their belongings. Uh, I never even thought of that before, but we're going to have to help them come up with a way of getting that done safely. Um, and then the council on aging is also looking to uh, start assisting people with their taxes. Um, so we're trying to help them get set up for that. Uh, we continued working with the essential businesses and the reopening plans. Um, that the state put out during this phase one. Uh, also, state, uh, started communications with other organizations in town. Uh, one of them was today was the uh, Norton Little League, which as of right now looks like they may be able to start practicing during um, in, the, in sometime in July or the end of June. Um, they're not quite sure yet. The, the guidance hasn't come out with that yet. Um, and then they're hoping for phase three games. Um, but we're waiting to see the guidance on that. Uh, but I'm in con connection with them to help them get the, get prepared. Um, and also working closely with the town manager on the town hall reopening plan with anticipated reopen date of, uh, for employees only of June 8th. Um, and then the public entry would remain restricted until further notice. Uh, we may go to appointment only type setup. Um, and then on top of all of that, I'm still working with the town hall meeting, uh, health and safety committee, um, on trying to propose safe plans for, um, town meeting if there was to be a town meeting. Um, and, uh, yesterday we, we met at the school yesterday to get a look at the field and see what type of pros and cons there will be for that. And we're looking to put a plan together to try and help. Uh, prepare if there's going to be a town meeting on the field. So that part of it's up to the Board of Selectmen and, um, and we look to you for the guidance on where the, where the, uh, meeting's going to be.
Um, but we'll try to put a plan together for both inside and out and, and supply you with that, with both plans at the next meeting. And that's it. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions from anyone on the board? Uh, I, have a, I have a couple questions, Brad. Yeah. Chris, I, I'm sorry, you cut out at one point. You said something about, um, you cut out, for, I think it was my, I had a little internet glitch there. You said something about having scheduled appointments. I just didn't hear what that was for. So when we first open up, we're going to open up uh, with town hall. We're going to open up with a restriction on public entry, okay. and it would be by appointment only. They could call, make an appointment with the department they want to be with, and uh, they would, you know, set up the appointment, come to the door. If, if it's something that we could just transfer paperwork at the door, that's that'd be great. Otherwise, if we have to let them in, they'll have to follow the procedure um, and leave us with information for contact tracing. So. Okay, so just kind of the reverse of, of how we close. Right, exactly. Right. Um, and then the other thing, I, I, I heard you say about the fields at the school for the meeting, the annual town meeting. Um, is there a reason why we're not considering using the parking lot? I think we went with the fields because of the sound system was a big thing, was a big thing. And I also think that, you know, that the field is set up to be uh, something that you bring a crowd into. Uh, it has a long walkway. Actually, and walkway. That's kind of what we don't want to have. No, I know, but it's it has a what what I meant to say was we have like a long walkway going up from the field to the front side of the building, and then we've got another one going to the back parking lot. And so we we figured that we could easily have two large lines, six foot separation all the way along. Logistically, it's a lot more challenging for the field, believe it or not. It's it's challenging going to be outside, but. Um, we have to kind of, do, we're, we're trying to put all the pros and cons together and figure out exactly how we're going to supply every item when it comes to the sound system, when it comes to safely um, getting the traffic, you know, traffic of people in there, keeping them separated, um, doing the temperature scans and that type of thing. So we're still, I mean, unfortunately, this isn't our only project right now, so um, we can only go so fast, but. We're working at trying to figure out if we can propose a safety plan for this board of selectmen to, to show that we can keep it safe. Or if there, if we find that we can't, that's what we're going to tell you. You know, we, there's just no way we can do it. Um, but we're optimistic right now that we can put something together. Uh, we're just not there yet with a final plan. Yeah. So, I mean, my concern, and, and you said it, this isn't the only thing that you're dealing with. I mean, we're, we're, you know, less than a month out on the meeting and we, we don't have a plan um, there, you know, to me, to me, I, I think that we should be a lot farther along than we are. So um, I know well, in my defense, in my group's defense, we're basically volunteers on this thing because nobody asked us to do this. <laughs> we just decided that if we, we saw a meeting coming up and we're going to do our best to try and make that meeting safe. So uh, this is kind of an informal committee. Um, quite a, it's, it's, you know, we're doing our best. I, I, no, I, I understand, and I'm not, you know, I'm not suggesting blame or anything, but I, you know, I wouldn't call this an informal meet, uh, you know, group because we met on this over a month ago and specifically said let's put a team together so that we're able to execute a town meeting safely. So if, if that's a matter of a lack of resources or a lack of time, then I would ask Mike to manage that appropriately and, and let's, let's get some more resources involved. But my, my concern, Chris, is that you guys have a lot to deal with. Right, and, and to your point, this is this is another thing on on your list of tasks, um, but it needs to get done, and it needs to get done quickly because we have to make decisions on whether or not we move forward. We don't move forward. It's inside. It's outside, right? And and I mean the the push was to have this in June, so my expectation is that we would be by far more prepared than we are right now. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, yes. Hi, it's Brian Clark. Thank you. Uh, just on uh, Renee's point. I think we can do anything you really want to do if you want it inside, outside, in the parking lot. Um, you know, if we have a little more direction, that would be fine too. I mean, it's not going to take much to put it together, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I think, I know that the high school is planning graduation July 25th on the high school field. Um, the, the, the superintendent mentioned that today. Um, you know, I think the definition of safe has changed. It's, it's going to be as safe as we can possibly make it, no matter where it is. Um, I know that uh, there was a town meeting recently in Blackstone in the parking lot. Um, I was on a conference call the other day with, with some Southeast Mass Chiefs, and five of the seven communities are all having it inside. 
So it's really, you know, wherever you feel is, is more appropriate. Uh, it's just my two cents. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Any other right. questions? Yes? Sean spoke up. I don't think you heard him. Yeah, I, I apologize. I, I'm saying I would, I would agree with that. I think we can make either place um, safe. It's just a matter of what, what, what you all want to do and then us figuring out the logistics after that. So. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, I have two things. Um, okay, my, yeah. So, Chris, my company has come up with a, a tool to, it's almost like a, a predictive thing based on the number of people and the size of the space. If you can get me the dimensions of the gym, I can run a few scenarios and share those with you just as, a, as another data point. Okay. Yes. The actual dimensions that I was given uh, yesterday, which were actually different from the original ones that I was given, <laughs> it's uh, 100 feet by 116 feet. Do you know how tall it is? It takes volume. Uh, I could find out. I'll, I'll email you tomorrow. Okay, thank okay. you. Probably 15 foot ceiling. Oh, more than that, yeah. In the gym? Way higher than that, yeah. Way higher yeah. than that. All right. Right. Yeah. Basketball hoops are 11 feet, so. <laughs> yeah, I would think it's the height of a two story building. At least. Yeah. I'll get that measurement tomorrow, Jeff. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank and you. There was something else that I had that I completely forgot about. If it drives my memory, I'll come back. Uh, it's starting to sound like me now. Uh, that's scary. <laughs> Brad? Yes, Mike. Is there any way that you could have a meeting um, next Thursday? To do um, to discuss this again, and also town meeting articles and budgets. Just that that be the only thing on the agenda. That's fine with me. How about the rest of the uh, board members? I can make that work. Renee and Mary. So Brad, well, I could probably make it work. Um, I got to tell you, I'm. I'm, I'm pretty frustrated and annoyed that like we continue to just schedule meetings upon meetings and not be prepared. I mean, we've been talking about this for over two months. Like I, Renee, I, Renee, I don't want to interrupt, but last week we talked about this last week. We were waiting for the board to figure out when you were going to decide on a meeting that was decided last week. Mike, we, we decided on a meeting last week. We have had many meetings before we had a meeting where we brought everybody together initially and talked about forming a group. Mm -hmm. to figure this out and that was over a month ago like the, it, it's not like the pandemic came out of thin air right and and like I, I again I mean you, you wanted a June meeting my expectation is that we would be more prepared this this close to that meeting and having to make a decision on it you know by what the 17th well um, the expectation was that the meeting would be in the gym and last week it was brought up to have it outside so I, I don't that, know where that expectation came from because we talked about outside meetings and I think Bill actually led with that when we talked as a group about having them inside and outside and Lauren had addressed it as well. So there were no decisions. That was my question about putting it on the agenda tonight so we could pick a venue and then people can plan to, to Chief Clark's point, right? Yeah, and, and Chris's point, I, I'm sure we can do anything, but they need the guidance. And so now we're going to wait. I mean, that's if they're looking for the guidance, I would say let's get together on Monday or um, Tuesday and give them the guidance and not wait another week for them. Meaning not not waiting for you guys, but get, like have you wait another four days before you get guidance from the board. Again, this this didn't this isn't something that we haven't talked about multiple times. We talked about it at the first meeting where we brought everybody together. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Jack. I'd be happy to eat, mon eat meat Monday, Tuesday, whenever. I, I would. Pref I have. I already have a meeting Monday, so I would prefer Tuesday. I think you'd have to do a uh, Tuesday anyway for the, like to post it. On, okay. Right. I think we've already missed the posting for Monday, Mike. Yep. Would I can Walt, do two. Well, while Chris was on there. I, I guess I'm making you the spokesperson for this subgroup to advise us. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, think that next Tuesday would be a uh, reasonable day 
to give us the, the pros and cons for both options. I think we could probably put something together that's, you know, not etched in stone, but I think we should be able to say yes or no as far as safe inside, safe outside, and, and here's a preliminary plan. Okay. Because again, it's not like everything else in our job stops for this, so. I understand, especially, especially in these times. And, and Chris, can I ask, out of all the guidance and things that you've read, because I know what I've heard on, on the calls that I'm involved in, have, have you heard at any point that safer or that it's not safer out to, to conduct business outside? No, as a matter of fact, Bill Gabea asked me this yesterday at the school, and, uh, you know, I came right out and told him. I said, obviously, um, I feel it's probably going to be safer outdoors, you know, okay. but at the time when we first put it together, we, we did not originally discuss outdoors. So it wasn't, it wasn't really put across to us that we were looking at indoor, outdoors. We were looking at just putting together a town meeting. So that's kind of the way we took it. Um, it, as part of the background on indoor outdoor, can we reach out to the school department to find out what type, what kind of, uh, town system? So I did, just, I did do that. I spoke with um, Wade Lazard as well as uh, um, Dr. Bayetta about that. They feel that um, the setup that they use for the football games and stuff would be plenty loud enough. Uh, we met with Jason Benjamin there yesterday. Um, and he was he was pretty confident, although we, they, you know there was still question about whether or not we could get some mics set up. But we, we'll work on that as well. Um, Jason, I don't know if you could speak on that. I think I see you on the end. Um, but, you know, I think the sound system should be plenty loud enough. If it can speak over a raging crowd at a football game, then you should be able to hear it at town meeting, I would think. Okay. That was, that was kind of the reason why we went for the track. Um, we're also thinking that, you know, if, we, if we're so against having it on the indoors and we plan this for the 27th and it's a rain day, we probably should have tents available for people to be under. And so that's another thing that we're looking into is renting tents for that are large enough to take on this type of event. Um, you know, so there's a lot to put together for outdoors um, that I didn't have prepared and I, I will work on from now until Tuesday night. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And, 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 and if I may. Could I just, before yep. I forget that, uh, in, in your, in your thought process, Chris, it sounds stupid, but could you, uh, also figure out, uh, if it was on the football field, a direction of orientation? Is it better to have the thing face the, uh, stands so that they can be utilized? Or would it be better to have it face, be, I'm, I'm trying to think of, first of all, I'm not sure what time we're going to have it. And I'm trying to think of, uh, the sun in people's eyes, things like that. Well, that was going to be another advantage of tents. So keep people out of the blaring sun and hopefully keep people from collapsing, from sitting in the heat. Um, we did talk about a nine or a 10 o'clock in the morning start um, in hopes to keep the heat down and you're not out there in the blaring sun, hopefully. Um, but my my other thoughts were with, with the tents was to keep people in shade and be able to see everything. We were hoping to maybe face the meeting towards the bleachers, uh, the, like the, the attendees towards the, the residents towards the bleachers, and maybe put the um, board of selectmen, the clerk and moderator, you know, in the FinCom and all that up on the track, but in front of the bleachers under their own tents. Um, so I mean, we'll we'll figure it out. It, it's still in the early stages, but you know, we'll figure it out. Um, it's not the first time I've put an event like this together, so. Okay, thank you, Chris. I'm sorry, Renee, back to you. No, I was just going to ask Chris if I, and I don't remember from Dr. Beta when he talked, when they were talking about the fields in that athletic complex, but do the football fields, um, are they typically wet? You know, like, is it something you're going to have to think about getting the tent up a couple of days before just to kind of limit? I think we would, yeah. I, and I talked to um, Wade about cutting the grass. You know, we'll have the grass sh sh cut short. Um, we'll put the tents in soon, like sooner rather than later, like you said, to try and keep them dry. And then, um, I, I also, I think we'll call the, uh, Bristol County Mosquito in to spray the area. Um, so we, we've thought of a lot of things with it, uh, being outdoors. 
but I haven't had a chance to put it all together, and I apologize. Well, I'm sure you're... Your hard work. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? Uh, I, my thing popped back into my head. Oh, I don't so, care about it now, Jack. <laughs> oh. yeah, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Um, when, I, there's been so many meetings, I'm losing track. But uh, Dr. Bayetta had mentioned that school property is technically closed until the end of June. And whether it was the Mass Department of Health or Board of Education was going after schools that had held like outdoor graduation ceremonies and things like that. Um, obviously, the implication being that we have an election planned for a school building as well as the town meeting on school grounds. Have we done any due diligence to see if we are allowed to do this or if we need to find a different venue that's not a school or push both of these things back beyond June 30th. So, so I've been told by both Dr. Bayetta that he has our support with this as well as the election. And I would think that he would know his rules on his building. So I'm hoping that he does. Um, I did not dig into that, but everybody I've spoken to with other towns, they're having them at their schools. So I'm guessing that it's okay, but I'll look into that as well if you want. I'll ask Dr. B if he's got information on it. Um, okay. And then the other thought, Mike, did you talk about the uh, out-of-town stuff? No, I, I, I was going to do that next. Go ahead. Um, so, Brad, um, the legislation to allow town meetings out of town um, was sent back to the Senate today after the House reviewed it. Um, I asked Jay Barrows when he thinks it'll be passed, and he said possibly the middle of next week. Um, so if that did pass, that would open up um, the Xfinity Center as an option. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments on that? Mike, have, have we engaged with the Xfinity Center at all? My understanding was is it's a pretty significant cost for that. And I know I, I brought it up, you know, six weeks ago about Xfinity Center, but have we talked to them? Because I've heard that it's costly for them to open. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if they would, but if they would, what what that bill would look like? I, I know that Chief Clark did reach out to them a couple weeks ago at least. And uh, I did reach out today to Jeff to ask him if that date was available. I haven't heard back yet. Okay, thank you. And as far as cost, who, is it is it going to be the same as if we did it at the football field? You know. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, we might have a problem with the sound system there, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. Okay, I see uh, on our uh, discussion for support of the restaurants, this unit. Yep. Um, what I was looking for um, as the restaurants uh, start to be allowed to open up, um, they may need some adjustments. And I was looking to get the board's support to allow um, restaurants to expand their outside seating and um, suspend the enforcement of the min minimum parking to allow more outside seating at some of these restaurants, subject to um, the health, the board of health agent, the fire department, and the building inspector reviewing their setup, what they plan on doing, and approving it. Does anyone have any questions? Mike, any questions? what is... We got a little back, a little oh, feedback. Um, I would support that. Go ahead, Renee. Is that... No, go ahead, Mary. No, I was just saying that I would support that. I think anything we can do right now to help the establishments in town get back on their feet is good. Yeah, I, I agree. Mike, do we know, like, what, what are the bylaws now? Like, what, just to understand... Uh, I don't want to say like the potential impact, but if the bylaw was put in place for some reason, you said something about increasing minimum parking? Um, no, uh, not enforcing the minimum parking requirement because then um, when the restaurant gets a permit, there is a minimum parking requirement for that restaurant. 
so they have to have so many spaces but now where they're not allowed to sit people inside they can't have as many people at the restaurant anyways and we may need to take up some of those spaces with tables outside okay okay yeah that and makes it, sense and then the other thing was i know like down the, this was done down in dennis and i know they also down there they have um not enforce the bylaw against um, temporary signs out in front of the restaurants which is also a big help because a lot of them have done a great job putting big signs out front letting people know they're open for takeout and pick up and putting the phone number on it so that helps out too and um, you know just uh, not enforcing that so much during this time and I, I would assume that that also would uh, include um, anyone with a liquor, liquor license they'd be yeah. able to sit outside that that i'll have to check more on brad um, because that is a little different um, right now there's legislation and i don't know if it's passed yet i don't know why <laughs> some of these emergent th things are taking so much time they were going to allow that to happen for restaurants with liquor licenses with the approval of the board of selectmen because right now they'd have to go to get your approval and get the abcc's approval but they're looking for a short period of time um, through the fall to allow just the selectmen to approve that with liquor licenses okay so i'll check on that and get back to you okay Is there any other questions or comments any um consultation we'd have to have with the planning board um i'll keep paul i'll paul's definitely in favor of this because uh, i've spoken to him you know anything to help the businesses out um, he's definitely supportive so mike what we're looking at right now is um we're moving restrictions on the parking the minimum parking and the signage are those the only two items yeah right now yeah and and, and also to allow outside tables correct okay so it'd be outside seating not increase not as many parking spaces and they could put outside additional outside signage so if anyone has the any any objection otherwise chair would entertain a motion to support i guess the uh support of local restaurants so moved second okay uh renee yes Mary? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, an update on the parks, playgrounds regarding the uh, governor's requirements. Hey everybody, um, I just thought, uh, Mike and I actually thought that you guys would want an update on uh, where things stand with Parks and Rec, because we are a pretty vulnerable point for uh, COVID and uh, there's some specific changes that are being made. Uh, so right now in phase one, uh, the parks are open, but um, the playgrounds are not. And it's a little tricky because we have Everett Leonard, which is part playground and part park. Um, so uh, the park is open with restrictions, um, no contact sports, no basketball, no volleyball. Um, the uh, playground is totally off limits. We've got it kind of cordoned off for the time being. Um, and Tricentennial, which is strictly a playground, that is closed. Uh, so in phase two, there will be no changes on the park front. However, the playgrounds will open with some restrictions. Um, the biggest one is going to be kind of annoying for me uh, because Tricentennial tends to be a dumping ground for um, little cars and things that kids ride in and we probably have upwards of 80 uh, trucks and things and um, they all have to be removed so I will certainly fill a dumpster with all this stuff um, but those are the requirements we, uh, and a face chair yes I'm sorry do we have to throw those away or can we store them I, I guess we could store them if we had room for them I don't know Maybe highway. <laughs> I go to keep for everything, but um, I mean, I, I know some things. The last time I was there, some things are fairly new. Some things obviously could be thrown away. 
I, I would just hate to see. I mean, there's a lot of things that people donate and the kids use. Yeah. Um, they miraculously just keep reappearing. That's one thing I don't worry about because we try to control it. And it's insane. People just keep bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. Um, sometimes they're broken and you know, we have to pay to get rid of all this stuff. So right. um, I could certainly weed through it if we could find a place to store it. Um, it will just, you know, keep growing, I'm sure, <laughs> once we do open. Um, so one of the key things we'll have to do is, is signage. Um, and right now I'm looking for, I'm waiting for the governor's office to get back to me on clarification on certain things. Um, they've kind of contradicted themselves in, in their declarations, um, even on group size. They say, you know, only 10 people, but then they link to a document that says, oh, that doesn't apply to outdoors. Um, so they, there's specific language that says groups of 10 or more are allowed as long as it's in an enclosed space, uh, such as a park, athletic field, or parking lot. Um, so anyway, I, before I, <laughs> Pay for signs. I need to make sure that we get this all, um, you know, get the right the right phrasing. Um, so once that's sort of done, we will have uh, have these guidelines posted at both parks. Um, Purell has become um, an obsession with me for the past week because it is just not available. Um, I did order some actually today from W. B. Mason. That it's the dispensers that are really difficult. To obtain um, and you need to have the liquids to go inside it so I'm hoping it's going to go through but we need to um, without counting the stands I spent $700 today on Purell um, it's just crazy uh, so uh, we will have um, Purell uh, you know wall mount in the pavilion uh, we'll have one at the pool we'll have some freestanding ones on the playground and the basketball court and if those stands are another six hundred dollars. So, um, and Mike, I hope you get the email to order those from Amazon. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, pool is opening June six, uh, twenty sixth. I'm sorry. Um, rentals are a little tricky. So, I have talked to all my June people, and we've either moved, moved them, or it's to cancel. I do have one that hasn't gotten back to me yet, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But, um, you know, it's pretty obvious that June is, we can't have any groups over 10, so that doesn't even make sense to do. Um, we do have eight, re uh, no, I'm sorry, four rentals in July and eight in August. Um, see, as I mentioned earlier, the plan is as these rentals get closer, they're, they're due to make their final payment two weeks before the event. So I'm um, hoping at that point in time, I will know what the requirements will be, uh, the restrictions and whatnot. So I will provide each um, renter with an agreement and they need to uh, adhere to that, sign it and get it back to me with their final payment. Um, it's tough because we have teenagers that are our lifeguards and they're kind of the authority figure. At, during these events, so I need to kind of take the pressure off them because it's, it's hard for them to tell a group of, you know, drinking adults that they can't do certain things. Um, so the more, the more I can do, the better it is just to avoid problems. Um, but the restrooms are a big issue. We're going to have to switch to daily cleaning with special chemicals. Um, the cleaning company is working on that and the uh, playgrounds are also going to be need, uh, need to be cleaned. Uh, the wording right now is regular cleaning and I don't know what that means. I don't know. Right now they're not cleaned at all. So um, regularly, does that mean once a week? Does it mean once a month? I, I don't know. So I'm waiting for clarification on that. And the last issue um, seems a little silly, but uh, it's trash bins. They're recommending lidless trash bins, and our bins have lids because wind and animals are not good for trash in a park. So I'm going to try. Um, I did some research to see if I could find, you know, park size bin for the four hundred dollars piece. So we're going to try to get two bins without lids underneath the pavilion, and hope we don't run into problems. So that's great. Um, 
And lastly, Chris alluded to this a little bit earlier um, about uh, Norton baseball and softball. Um, I am also in touch with um, Jim Ingram, who is the head of the, the league. Um, obviously, it's town property, the Birch Hill Complex, and Lions Field. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Pierre. Um, so right now in phase one, nothing's allowed. They're getting the fields ready, but they're not, um, there's no activity going on. Uh, in phase two, they'll have limited um, participation. I think more, mostly just practices and drills, but no games. And, and, no veg. And then phase three, it's still to be determined. So they're really squishy. The, the governor's really squishy about this right now. So I am hopeful that they will be able to play, but I don't know. Um, and that's certainly Park and Rec does have um, little, little say potlucks, kind of like the from real little kids. Um, not going to that applies to us too in the fields over at Everett Leonard. So, kind of a um, couple of steps forward, wait and see, and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions, comments? Uh, just want to thank Sharon for all of her hard work on this and. Um, just to uh, highlight how much joy one of the programs that you recently implemented with the uh, the DJ birthday DJ program with donations to uh, Covered of Kindness. Uh, my my two kids have been uh, the benefit or benefactor of uh, two of those DJ visits, and it's a, a great way to get some donations for one of the great organizations in town. Um, they have a blast. They dance in the front yard. It's uh, it's really really cool, and for a uh, period of time that is a little stressful and sad for, for kids. It's, uh, it's a great way to bring some joy. So thank you for putting that out there and um, doing really oh. doing good on both ends. So thank you. And I'm happy to say we've raised about fourteen hundred dollars so uh, so far, which is for the cover of kindness. Okay. It's excellent. I echo that too, Sharon. It's it's great. And uh, hey, is is the Fat Stanley program over? Um, the first one is, I'm pulling down the, the flat Stanley, I hit 20 of them around town, um, and the feedback has been phenomenal. Um, but as I take them down, I'm going to do little visits and take pictures around town and with flat Stanley. And the next one is, um, the next event, kids will have to try to figure out where they are from the photos. So, uh, we had, we had a lot of old people, not old people, my <laughs> age, <laughs> um, taking part in Flat Stanley too. And it was really a, like a, the feedback I've gotten has been awesome, but they've done it as families. And um, so I, I won't give credit to, well, I should give credit to the person who came up with the idea, but uh, thank you, Renee. <laughs> I, 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 I have to tell you, you you're, doing, you're doing a good job, Nina. I thought a Flat Stanley, a book for it. Thank you, Peter. I found that one too, but I wanted to see a list of 20 because we could not find 20. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, it's up on the Parks and Rec site. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I'll go look. Facebook page. I forgot to email in our responses, but we, we did it too. We had a good time doing it. Good. Uh, there was one kidnapped from the Yale School. Um, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> did you receive a ransom note yet? No, I did not. And uh, so far, as far as I know, that was the only one taken. And I don't know why, but it was. So, and the stake. They took the stake with it. Oh, was Chris Clark still on? Maybe we can put out an ABV for uh, missing facts. <laughs> yeah, let's do a search. Uh, it's under investigation. Okay. <laughs> Is there a reward, Chief? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Made a few words. Okay, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. You brought, brought, brought a lot of joy to people in a very difficult time. Thank you. Okay. Okay, if we have no other comments, we'll move on to our next piece of business, a discussion on funding for food programs. Ms. Units? Um, right now, uh, the food program the total cost is $231,821, and right now the estimated USDA reimbursement is $115,747, and the 75% um, reimbursement from FEMA for the adult 
males is $87,056. And the local portion that would not be covered because it's only 75% would be $29,019. And so we will be trying to see if uh, we can receive fun funds for that through our uh, COVID-19 CARES funding. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, do we know how much longer the um, the meals program is going? So I'm assuming the I, school needs to end that at the end of the year, the school year. Um, I believe this week ends um, the adult portion of it. Um, I, Matt uh, Wells contacted um, FEMA to see if they would be extending the program longer. And uh, they did. They said they would not. So as of right now, I think was, this could be the last week for adults. Okay. And, and then June fifteenth, the schools close. Okay. I thought he put something in his um, in the update about the continuation for the schools over the summer. I thought that was standard for um, students. Right. They, they for, for like zero to 18, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know, that's something that they would have to talk to you about. I'm not sure what their requirements are with that. I think that might be uh, students who meet a certain uh, income, whose families meet a certain income threshold also. But I'm not 100% sure with that. Any other questions or comments? I was just looking at his email. It says that the, um, it says there's the SSO reimbursement rate per child participant and can continue through to the start of school in September. But I don't know. Um, Mike, can you, or, you know what, I can, I can email him and get an update. So are we, I guess in respect to that, if, if the program for adults is ending, um, it actually says on here through May 26th, which would have ended already. Um, I guess from the CARES Act, what, what do we have allocated right now? Uh, what was it, 1.7 million? Yes. And, and of that 1.7 million, what are, what do the costs look like? Like, do we have an opportunity to support this? Um, on, a, on an interim basis? We're working on uh, costs right now. So we asked everybody to have all their costs in by the beginning of next week so we could see where we're at and then we can give you an update on that. Okay, because assuming without reimbursement, right, you gave some numbers um, for adult, potentially $46,000 for June. Right, and that would be completely unreimbursed, un, or not reimbursed. Put the language that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so so when um, when Mike, are you expecting those back so that we would have some information on whether or not we can continue? I'm expecting everything back by next Wednesday. So has that? Do are, are you aware has that stopped on the twenty sixth? I, not, I, I don't know. I thought today was the last day. I mean, unless it's a typo in the email. Um, yeah, I did, it did say that, but I thought he said this uh, um, yesterday uh, or today that today was the last day. So in, until we have more information, can we continue to support it? Well, I guess that's something, you know, that we'll have to look at. The question is, do we want to support it in the same format where we're paying chart wells? I mean, right now, there's a lot of overhead in the program because mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're paying chart wells who has to buy the food, and then we're paying the workers, and chart wells obviously has to make money on that, so there must be some markup where 
we have agencies around that get food donated, so there's no cost to the food. So that's something uh, we'll have to work on. Okay, so so what's the plan until until you get at least money back or the estimates back on Wednesday? Until I, I get the estimates on Wednesday. Yeah, are we going to continue to support the adults until you get the estimates back and then um, have time to determine what a replacement would look like? Um, I don't believe so. I think that the program was just stopping this week. We don't have anyone on from that group, right, on the on the call? No, they had a meeting tonight. Okay. I think just we were talking about the CARES Act and how we were getting 1.7 million. It's which sounds like it could be able to fund all our problems, but I, you have to keep in mind that, especially the uh, school department, is already looking for a large chunk of that just to educate the uh, children at home. So it's. They, they, before we can commit to spending too much of this money, we have to find out how much we, the different departments have already spent. No, no, completely understood. And, you know, and, and it goes back to, I mean, it's us having a solution, right, to say, look, you know, we can't provide it through um, the school or the high school anymore, but here are other alternatives. And I know, you know, the Cupboard of Kindness said they opened up a couple extra days. Um, you know, I, I know that we have a list here. I don't know who's going to go. Mike, if you're going over that list for different things. Um, so, like a, a lot of these that I'm looking at that, you know, from the food pantries, right, a lot of them in the description are specific to Atterborough residents, elders only, South Atterborough residents, Plainville residents. So, I mean, and, and ours is, too, the Covered of Kindness is Norton residents only. So, you know, there there's one item there and then a, a couple others. I mean, I, I just, I want to make sure that we have a plan and that we have a way to provide people the information to, to find food. I mean, that's a, a basic necessity, right? Yeah, Beth, I'll have Beth Rossi post uh, on the website all the different, make sure all the locations that Norton residents can go to are up there. Okay, so we'll plan on, on um, talking about this more, not at the meeting next week, but at our the meeting afterwards to understand yeah. what the costs are going to be and... Yeah. Okay. But in, in the meantime, I think the important thing is if people are in need, they should uh, reach out to the uh, Council on Aging or the Veterans Departments. They're more like our social service departments and they can help them, uh, direct them to where they might be able to get some help. Mm -hmm. Mike, what, what's, do we know what the balance is in the Norton Cares? Well, our balance, oh, the uh, $3,000, the donation fund, yeah, yeah $3,000, somewhere around there. And, and does Beth run that? Um, Beth and Estelle. Okay. Chairman and Brown, well, this is Michael Spool. Um, yes, Spool. Um, can we, it, Ms. Um, Mike, is there any chance that we might be able to also find out adult utilization of, of the program? How, how, I mean, is, I'm curious if people are still using it. I, I'm not sure. They, they might be, but is there any way that, uh, do, does anyone have those util, adult utilization numbers? Um, they the do, yeah, the schools do keep track of that. So every week, every day, they keep track of uh, how many students, how many adults, how many seniors. So they do have that. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, so I guess we'll, we'll wait until uh, we get some feedback next week on, in addition to directing people to uh, Council on Aging and veterans to possibly, if they're in need, they might be able to direct them to places that can help them. Um, we'll look for a feedback on any possibility that we may be able to help uh, by the, with the town. 
Um, if there's no other questions or comments, I move on to uh, uh, fourth item uh, to vote to grant an extension to the uh, tolling agreement regarding the SPAC uh, landfill. Mr. Uh, Units. Yeah, the Board of Selectmen signed uh, an agreement, a tolling agreement, in July 2018 that's due to expire in June. And um, so the request is from our attorney that the board agree to have the chairman sign an extension of the toll agreement until March 20th, 2021. So this will allow time for the PRPs and DEP and EPA um, to iron out any responsibilities that are remaining on the site. Um, the reason for the toll agreement is that everybody agrees not to sue everybody else in the time that they're working out um, any any uh, things that need to be worked out um, for, before the final closeout. So uh, the attorney recommends that we the board vote to have the chairman sign the agreement. Any questions or comments? If not, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, have the board support the chairman signing a uh, extension to the tolling agreement of the regarding the Shrek landfill property. So moved. Second. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none. Renee? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jack? Yes. And I'll also vote yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, next order of business is review and or vote on fiscal year 2021 budget. Ms. Units. Um, I present, presented you uh, with the budget recommendations for all the departments. Um, and uh, that was my suggestion was that at your meeting next week, we can review all the budgets, just do the um, discussion on where the town meeting is going to be, and then go into the budgets and any articles that we can take up. Okay, so you, you're not looking for us to vote tonight, but just to no. present it. Yeah. I, okay, would, think, would you mind just giving a quick overview of what we're looking at on the, um, on the Excels? Within the packet. Sure. So, um, what did you get? You got the uh, eight page sheet, roughly, I think it is, that shows all the town budgets um, with what was proposed by the departments and my recommendation. Uh, we have not put the finance committee recommendations on there yet. We'll have that by you uh, next week. And um, also, I think you have the budget letter just um, talking about the times that we're in. <laughs> And uh, how difficult these, uh, you know, the times are going to be, obviously. And we're working to try and hold things together by using uh, some stabilization money. So the new growth estimate for the budget is 745000 And that's $154,268 um, reduction from the FY20 estimate. Um, I'm assuming that our local aid estimate of, will be $16,158,585. And that's assuming a 10% cut in the unrestricted government aid. And that, so that's $220,702 in cut. The big unknown right now is the chapter 78. And um, we're hoping that the federal government will give the state some money and the state can at least hold us um, level funded with what we got this year with chapter 70. Because if that's cut 10%, that'll prevent a huge problem because it'll be a 
$1.2 million uh, cut that we'll have to make in our budgets. Um, Mike, that, did you say, you said, you mentioned the letter. I don't have a separate letter. Oh, you don't have the budget letter, I, budget I message. Does, does anybody else see it? I, I see. Okay. Um, I just have the Excel sheets. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what it looks like I have too. Can you send that to us before? Sure. Yep. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean that to um, interrupt you. I just wanted to oh, okay. make sure that nobody else had it either. Yes. And uh, so just um, the local receipts, we're projecting um, at 23% below what we actually collected in FY19. And still looking to use 600,000 about free cash. And then also looking to use uh, money from the stabilization fund to help offset some of those cuts in uh, local aid and receipts of $439,500. And increasing the ambulance receipts to $700,000. So with that, the town budget in those spreadsheets that you have, um, it's about, it's a 2.2% increase on the town side, general government, um, and the schools, a 2.5% increase. And I know they're working on their budget tonight, and uh, the superintendent's going to be at the finance committee on Monday. And as the superintendent has said, and I've said, you know, um, like often happens, you know, we're going to be starting the year with this budget, and then we'll see what happens in October. Uh, we always make adjustments in October. We're always hoping we can adjust up, but we don't know if that's going to happen this year, obviously. And Mike, can you just tell me on the, on the column that says fiscal year 20 budget appropriate transferred is, is that just the total amount that was given? That's not what we used, right? So the budget appropriated transferred is what was appropriated. Okay. Flop of year. Yep. And is that value the combination of the spring and fall town meetings? Because I know sometimes folks like, said so we've added more back in. It would. Yep. And, and do we have um, do we have any information about what's been expended from each of those? Um, I can email that to you. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Well, on the topic of the budget, um, how's the preparation of the uh, 112 budgets going? Um, actually, pretty good. Everyone uh, has been working with the town accountant to get them in. Um, so I, I think he is... Uh, pretty far along in receiving them from most of the departments. A few more than he needs, but um, most of them have come in. So he, he's now working on that with them. Thank you. Is there any uh, section of the budget that anyone had any questions on? Or? I think, Brian, we just need time to look through it before right. the, the next meeting. I know I do, but I didn't know if <laughs> maybe all you people could were accounting geniuses and could whip right through. And, but, you know, it, it makes sense to me that we hold this until next week whenever our meeting is, which I want to, I want to get back to before I forget. We, we originally spoke of having it on Thursday, and then we talked of Tuesday. Which night are we shooting for us where I can... Right there down. Is that Tuesday at 6 30? Brad? I thought, I thought it was Tuesday. Yes, Mike. Oh, go yes, ahead. Yes, Someone else was talking. Go ahead. Was Mary? Just, Rene? No, it was me. I, I, it's Renee. I, I just said I thought it was Tuesday. Well, af after I asked, I looked down and I wrote Tuesday at 6 30. Can, can you have it at 7? I have a um, MFN meeting at 6. Well, I mean, I can. And, as a matter of fact, with my pen, I just did that. So, unless there's a problem with anyone else, we'll have it next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Works for me. It up. It's amazing how nobody has a life anymore, isn't it? 
Okay. I'm, I'm busy here now than I was ever before. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I that probably could be, but for some reason I don't seem to have the enthusiasm or the personal drive to do things. It's my uh, natural born uh, procrastinating. I'm I'm getting. I'm fine tuning it. Okay, we'll move on then to uh, old business and a discussion on the uh, town quiet hours. Okay, um, if I could. Yep. Um, I, this came up from Selectman Stale uh, a few meetings ago, and I did reach out to other towns and I really didn't receive anything back, and I haven't received anything from town council. But I did think back to when I was in college and you, in the, down the Cape, and I know that Yarmouth had one of these bylaws because they used to pull buses up to parties and load people on. So um, I just wanted to see, you know, maybe um, what the intent is, or maybe if Mary wants to work with myself and the chief on this, if this is getting somewhere near what you're looking for. Yeah, like I'd be happy to work with you guys on it, um, and then maybe bring our ideas back to the board. I'm not looking for anything, you know, really drastic. Just some basic protection for people, say, between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 or 7 a.m. Yeah, it'd be good if we could work on it with the chief because obviously they're going to have to be the ones to enforce it and then come back with something. Yeah. Like Mansfield doesn't have anything? I would think that they would have something with, with the Xfinity Center. I don't, I didn't get, I'll reach out to him again, but nobody sent anything to me. Huh. Or maybe they figure it's on the Norton line, what do they care? No, Xfinity Center, they have noise requirements there. I don't think they technically uh, enforce it all the time, but they do have noise requirements. And I know that Mansfield, I think they have, uh, um, whatever you call it, to record the decibels, because it's only supposed to be heard so far from the uh, facility. So. I'm four miles away and I can hear it. <laughs> I, I, <bet. laughs> I wonder if we're going to say that, right, Mary? Exactly. <laughs> well, That's everybody, I, I can hear it not too far because I live not too far from there, right? When, right, when Mary? They, yeah. When they first went in, we could hear it out in my backyard on North Worcester Street, and we could hear it clear enough that we were felt like we were at the concert. So they have done sound uh, eliminating foliage and things like that since then. Okay. And the other Xfinity has an agreement. The town of Mansfield has an agreement with Xfinity on when they they're supposed to be done with their concerts. It's probably part of their licensing? It is, yes. Yeah. So they, they might not need a, uh, a quiet hours, uh, you know, bylaw. They just fold that one item into uh, a license. So it, in this, this case, I guess we'll have uh, Mary, the chief, and uh, units confer and get back to us with uh, some ideas on a possible bylaw for uh, the town quiet hours. Sounds good. Okay. Now we'll move on to a discussion on signage on the Norton Reservoir water bodies. This units. Um, Heath Silver um, has said that he will uh, make signs, putting up uh, the regulations um, at Tunaba Beach and at Sangs. I say Sangs all the time. Uh, what is it now? <laughs> Chinese restaurant. Jasmine <laughs> Garden. Jasmine Garden. Yes. Oh, sorry. Jasmine Garden Mud. So, um, in any other locations that uh, you think are beneficial? Did anybody have any comments, questions? 
Um, no, I appreciate the quick response to that, Mike. That's um, that's great. I know um, was it Dave Lennon reached out and uh, was concerned about the increase in boat traffic. So I think anything that we can put up there that is not able to be torn down by some scoff laws will be great. And um, the two chiefs are on. I know that um, they've went out previously last year and did some patrols every once in a while. Right now, the boat that they use um, from the fire department is in getting repaired. Um, but the police chief did also reach out to natural resources. Um, and the environmental police have put the reservoir on their radar and they hope to be out there next week, I believe, Brian, you said? Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> So there, I mean, there aren't that many environmental police in Massachusetts, but uh, so they're stretched thin. But they did agree that they'd come down and try and uh, do a patrol out there. And, and Mike, can can you just um, again? You said signed by Jasmine Gardens, and, and where were the other signs going to go? Uh, Juniper Beach. Juniper Beach, in um, but. And another thing on Juniper Beach that I want to work with the fire department. Um, is um, marking out an area when they had to go out on the reservoir the other day um, they had trouble getting access at juniper beach because of where all the cars and trucks were parked there so we're going to have to we're going to look at that and see what we can do about that that's great um, and i had to go back into um i did receive uh, some communication from a resident from Paula Stearns again on that and, and she had indicated um, she indicated that you know it's still an issue there's still excessive amounts of trucks and trailers she said on the one Sunday there were 22 um, she also mentioned too and, and I you know I, I imagine the signage is, is going to have some detail on the hours but I don't know if, if we have the ability to get um, to patrol in that area because she's, she still says there are a lot of people coming early and a lot of people um, leaving after hours, you know, having having others, um, and I'm, I'm actually looking at her now, um, saying that there's still uh, constant nighttime driving, people hanging out um, for a few and then they leave all hours of the night. So it, it seems like, um, you know, some of the, the earlier discussion we had that it's, it, this is still an issue going on. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So, obviously this is this goes on at the beginning of the year and continues. Like, I, I would like to see a gate or something there that we can, you know, we put a gate there, it's open to for so many hours during the day, you know, it closes at dusk, and there's signage there that says, if you're there past dusk, your car is going to get towed. That way we can enforce it even more because right now we, we really don't have any enforcement capabilities there and it, i mean i know i know she's frustrated and, and it's kind of frustrated on us too because it's not there's just not a lot we can do there if we if we were able to, to lock that area off and you know tow those vehicles that are there late i'm going to tell you it's going to go away the problem's going to go away yeah, and, and Chief, you know, when we first, and this was when, you know, Jack and I, I think first joined, we had that conversation and you weren't at the meeting. And I thought one of the, like we had mentioned the gate too, and I thought one of the, the feedback items was, is who was going to open it and close it, right? Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, I guess, you know, for some part we can do it, but I don't, I don't want to guarantee that we could do it every night. I mean, honestly, it might be something that Paula might be able to do for us. She's right there. If we designate her, a point her is that, the gatekeeper, if you will. Could yeah. there be any issues if she's walking that thing and people are still sitting there and they see her doing it? Like, I, I wouldn't want to put her in yeah, it's yeah, in I don't know. way. Well, I mean, you know, most, most places that have beaches have a beach committee that, that do that type of thing. So I just couldn't, I don't know if I could guarantee we'd be able to be down there every single night. And, you know, somebody might forget, we might get busy doing something else. It just... I mean, I, I think it, it, if that's if that's a way that we can start it, right? And then maybe we talk to the water bodies um, commission, is that commission, and and see if you know they have some options or they could help too. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if if you guys were able to close it right at the time it's supposed to be closed, I think that that 
I don't see that as a huge issue because, you know, eventually it would get closed or just for that one night it would stay open. But I, I think it, you know, to your point, you put the gate there, it's, it's going to stop it and you have a little bit more authority. Mm -hmm. um, Brad, what would we have to do to, um, to look into that or, or to get that moving? I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for putting, putting a gate up, possibly, uh, using telephone poles or something like that to make a good sturdy gate that we could, uh, chain. And I don't want to speak for uh, the highway department, but I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, Keith could probably fix us up with some telephone poles and put a gate together. It might be worth asking. And then, uh, the police department, I mean, as long as it's there, and even if we use it four out of the seven days, people the, using the beach are going to know the, the potential is there, that they're going to have their car and trailer towed. That should be a much, enough deterrent, I would think. I wouldn't want a uh, citizen to just go and lock it on their own. If they were going to go out to lock it, I'd like them to call the police department ahead of time so that they're going to get some kind of a backup. But it would make it so, so the police didn't have to go down, you know, uh, on their own and check to see if there's a car there to be, you know, dealt with. They can get a call that, you know, this guy's been here. And I mean, give, give, give somebody like me like, like 10, 15 minutes. If they're over that, then the neighbor down there can just call, I would think, the police department. And when they're available, they can come down and take care of it. But, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I think it'd be a great idea to look, at, look into getting a geek put down there. And, and in addition to towing, are there fines that can be assessed as well so we could pay for any uh, associated costs? That would have we, could issue, we could issue a parking ticket for down there. I mean, it's not a lot of money, probably $50, but, you know, that would be what we'd do. I would assume if we're going to make it a lot better fine, it would have to be something that would go to the town meeting for a, like a bylaw type for bylaw enforcement. I'm asking, yes. I guess it's done directly up to you, Chief. Yes. So, so it's something we could at least start it and see if just the deterrent helped and then we could start at, we could go forward possibly with a uh, bylaw in the at one of the future town meetings to try to put a little extra uh, power into it. I agree, I agree, Brad, because I go by there a lot of times. I walk there lots and lots of times and I see cars parked there that are folks and all sorts of things. So I agree with the selectman and I agree with Chief Park about a gate there at Juniper Beach and also at near Devon Garden. I also think it might be worthwhile looking to see if there's a, almost like a gate arm that we could put on a on a timer, so that between the hours of you know, six a.m. to seven p.m. the arm is up and then it goes down and then that's it. So I think anything that's relying on the the police or a resident or the water bodies committee. It's one thing to close it, but getting someone out there reliably to open it back up at six in the morning, I think is going to lead to more parking frustration for the residents in that immediate area. So if we can engineer out the human factor there, um, I think that might be worth the investment. I think Brian said he could get there at six every morning. I thought <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> I'm, going to take, I'm, I'm going to take the patrol boat you're getting in capital. <laughs> As right. Jack went from a, a, a minor project to like high end, now maintenance, you have to worry about what happens in the winter. Can, yeah, can we start baby steps and just get like a big walk? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it'd be great if we could have, have something automatic, but I'm thinking to have anything that'd be rugged enough to put up with somebody, some irate boater ramming it with his truck. It had to be an extremely uh, solid piece of equipment, and I think to lift something like that, you're talking a lot of money. But that sounds like a much bigger fine, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that, Brad. <laughs> yeah, that would also be sort of an idiot tax on anybody who decides to work the gate. So, mm. but no, I mean, if we just 
at least like Renee said, we said baby steps. If we just get, you know, a manual gate, it's a big step over where we get to now. Now, can I just ask, there are two, kind of two entrances there. Like how, who, who or how would be responsible to kind of scope it out and figure out the best approach? Um, I think we should, the two chiefs and Keith Silver um, should work on that because as I said earlier, the fire chief has a certain way that he, he needs access with his equipment. So um, he would want to make sure that that's done properly. So I would think those three would be the key. Okay. Well, awesome. if, if you could ask the, those three people to take a look at that for us, we appreciate it, Mr. Meadows. Okay. Anyone else? Hearing none, we'll move on to town manager's report. Um, we did uh, receive a letter, Brad, to your, your attention from the Department of Housing and Community Development stating that um, the Norton Crossing project, which is the project at 95 Mansfield Ave, uh, they're pleased to inform you that your application for project eligibility under the local initiative program for the proposed Norton Crossing project has been approved. So uh, that's the first step, obviously, um, for uh, the developer to have the state agree that it's a worthwhile location. The project uh, meets conceptual, they're in support of the conceptual plan and they feel that the company has the financial feasibility to develop the project. And um, so now they will have to move on, obviously, through town boards and uh, move forward the permitting. So they have taken the first step. OK, does anyone have any questions? Uh, just for clarification, this is the 95 Mansfield Avenue? It is. It's funny that the letter, I don't even see the address in there, and I don't remember it. Yeah, it, took, it, 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 crossing. it is in there somewhere because it took me a while to find it. Yeah. It's on one of the pages, I know, because I searched through it to find it. So, 95 Mansfield is over by Midway Collision, according to my map. I think, wasn't it 195 was the one over, I'm assuming we're talking about the one by Roach Brothers and McDonald's, right? Right, right next to Roach Brothers. Yeah, so that's 195, which I know, if I recall correctly, this is the address that we are continually in. <laughs> he does say, it, it does say on the last page, it says 95 again. All right. So well, wait, I, I thought you said it was 95, because they presented to us 195. Right. I, on yeah. the last page it says it? The last, if you go to the last. Yeah, I think 95 is, 95 is, uh, is 95, Mansfield Avenue is across from North Liquors, and 185 is right next to the Bigwood Plaza. So then we updated our notes incorrectly, and the letter that was sent Ooh. was incorrect, because I swore it was 95. I can run and grab my papers. Yeah, I don't even remember meeting. now which. Hold on, I'll, I'll look at the meeting minutes that we, um. It's a it's a good thing I have you on board helping you guys out. You are absolutely right, Peter. Yep. So one of them was the 13th, right? That we had, we did, we redid because of the address. I believe so. So they presented 195. We said it was 95. And we went and put 95 in there. So the letter that we sent said 95 Mansfield Avenue, but what the applicant had given us was 195. So it really is 195. Jack or Peter? Yes, yes. it's 195. And the third page from the state has it as 95. Well, that's because our letter to them said well, ninety-five. No, so I know I know where the where they might have gotten the confusion. Just actually, where, how did we? 
And no, it's, a, it's it's a uh, the page after that label in which uh, it has the uh, the units listed. It has the sponsor and the uh, project address. It would be like the it would be like the fourth page, but it's not part of the. Jack, you couldn't have come up with this uh, two weeks ago when we modified all the meeting minutes to say 95? I'm sorry, Renee. Hmm. I called. So. Okay. For, for future reference and for all. Oh, well, there. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's good. It, it must be 195. But just ver just please verify that and make so that all the uh, notes clearly state the proper it, address. Yeah. Do we have an issue that we read it in for the motion is 95? Or is that a moot point at this point? It's probably mute at this point. Okay, I'll shoot yeah. you a note on the meeting minutes. Yeah, all, all those things you changed last week, change them back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it in noted in the uh, letter from the Commonwealth at all. So. Okay. Is there anything else on nope. 95 slash 195 means no. Okay. And um, the next uh, CARES Act funding we talked about earlier. Uh, so our allotment under the funding is 1.7 million. And the, uh, the departments are working on uh, providing me with any expenses that they have or will have, have had or will have shortly um, for the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And, and so that'll involve extra cleaning. Um, it'll involve any PPE. Um, it'll involve any purchases we had to make as far as uh, sanitizer and wipes and um, what we had to do to, for protective um, barriers at all the offices, um, any technology that we had to um, upgrade to in order to be able to work remotely. Um, the schools are working on the same thing, any any uh, technology that they had to add, add or will have to add for uh, at-home learning. All of that will be included um, in the funding. And uh, as I said earlier, um, the 25% match for the food program. So uh, uh, when we, I get all that information from all the uh, different uh, departments, I'll let you know what uh, that totals. Okay. Anyone have any questions? You all set? Yep. Okay. We'll go move on to the update on the Blue Star Business Bar. Yeah. Um, Jeff O'Neill is working with a real estate developer um, for the possible locating of a pharmaceutical company and that's looking to take um, the entire building, the first building when you turn it on the Leonard Street. Um, so I know the IDC is working with um, Jeff and uh, a letter of support. And I drafted a letter of support also. Um, so hopefully um, that's the site that they choose. That would be great for the town. Any questions or comments? 
Uh, just to clarify, Mike, that is it's the first warehouse, correct? Not the retail, right. not the first retail building that's not there yet. Right. Right, it's the, what, 100,000 100, square foot building? Um, 120, I think, yep. Okay. That'd be, that'd be another great tenant to have and business to have in town. They would. Just a couple more things. Sure. Um, so, as you know, uh, a little while back, you signed an extension um, for the sign, the digital sign that uh, was being put up out on 495. And now, um, just wanted to let you know that Carol Advertising has moved forward and applied at the state, and they actually have a um, a hearing coming up on June 11th with the Office of Outdoor Advertising. Um, so they have moved on to the next step. So I know that all was delayed, obviously, because of uh, figuring out how they were going to do things with uh, COVID. And I think it's actually going to be a remote meeting, a virtual meeting. So. And one other thing, I know you probably saw in the news, and I know we've had, I think it's three employees now receive letters for, about uh, the fraudulent claims for unemployment. And so uh, we're going to post on the website tomorrow. There's a site you can go to, uh, the police chief provided me with, and this is through the Department of Unemployment Assistance. So if anyone gets a letter, you receive a letter that says how much money you've been uh, approved for through the unemployment, and it's all a scheme that somehow their money's being redirected out of the country. And uh, so mm -hmm. you go to um, the mass.gov site, www.mass.gov um, backslash info details, backslash report slash unemployment benefits um, dash fraud. So if you go to the unemployment site, you'll see that. And um, there's a form you can fill out and a phone number you can call, 877-626-6800. Um, to uh, inform them that you've received that. Okay, my, my screen is going blank, so I'm not sure if I'm with you or not. We still got you, Brad. I see you, Brad. Uh, I, see, I see Jack now. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry. It, 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 got, it got quiet and my screen went blank, so does anyone do you have any questions regarding uh, the town manager's report? Now we'll move on to... Uh, uh, Suckman's report in mail. Jack, do you have anything? Uh, yes, I have uh, two things this evening. Uh, first, I had a resident reach out to me, uh, I think, middle to the end of last week to see about getting a sign put up on their street for their uh, autistic child who has a tendency to dart out. Um, I reached out to, to Keith and uh, Within less than a week, he was able to get us to up, and she's thrilled. Um, so I just want to acknowledge uh, Keith and the Highway Department for reacting so quickly to a request. Um, I know she feels better um, knowing that it's there, and uh, it's, a, it's a great great thing for what they were done. So thanks to Keith. Uh, the second item I had was... Uh, just a request for clarification. Um, after the tweed fire, uh, I think we recognized the SEMREC dispatchers, but I guess it was the, uh, the local dispatch team that was helping coordinate that, uh, including the uh, Bristol County Mutual Aid. So I uh, just want to recognize them. And I guess uh, in particular, Scott and Emily were on ship. So thank you for to those two for helping coordinate that massive response for, uh, for that fire. Excellent. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Renee, do you have anything? 
Um, just a couple things. Uh, Mike, I just wanted, I, I was out on the town website last night um, looking for some information and the, the link that we have for um, COVID-19 goes to a couple different Word documents, what well, looks like Word documents, PDF with um, a lot of outdated info. I don't know if we can, you know, you have to look at, at what needs updated or maybe just direct them to the state site. Um, there were two. I, I have them. Um, I started writing it down because I, I couldn't remember. I can send you. I believe I have it in the uh, in an email. So I'll shoot those to you. Okay. Thanks. Um, I just haven't had time to do that final uh, or send the final email. It looks like three different areas that I that I came across. Um, and then I know we talked about um, maybe not the last meeting, but the meeting before. Uh, you were going to follow up with Chris Carmichael on the inspection for the COA. Do you have any updates on that? I don't. Okay. And then um, the last thing, and I don't know, I don't see Chris on the line anymore, but there's uh, been some discussion on social media about the water dispenser. I don't know if that's... If, that's something that he's talked to the Water and Sewer Commission about um, in respect to opening that up or if that's within the state's guidelines. Um, that was, they had a letter from DEP on that. So that was the state on that. So I'll check with uh, Frank and see what they're saying on that. Okay, perfect. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to be at least until phase three, but at least if they can provide some info to the public, I think it would help. Yeah, I know. If that's the case, it'd be nice to put, you know, a little post-it, you know, a sign on there that due to state regulations, this cannot be uh, activated until, and give us the data or a phase. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, too. They, they actually have a lot of guidance right now on... And I imagine that they're, they're going to have to deal with this, probably that dispenser unit, but on, you know, fountains and other water dispensers that have been sitting stagnant and making sure that they're cleaned appropriately and protection for folks not to get um, Legionnaire's disease as well. I'm, I'm sure that they're up to speed on that, but, you know, I, I, I would imagine that the, the vendor would be responsible that, for that and would probably, you know, add to the timeline of any reopening once we knew when it was safe. Yeah, I did see that um, the Water and Sewer Department actually sent Wheaton College information on that, that, where everything has been shut down for so long that there's a process that they have to follow when they restart, just for that particular reason. Yeah, it's interesting the things that you don't think of. It, yep. Would that affect the schools? I mean, I know the schools are closed over the summer, so they might have that in place already, but... Uh, Wade probably has that in place already, I'm sure because they look close to it. But it has been longer, so it is something to be concerned about. Would you mind, uh, did you say you're talking to Joe tomorrow? Yes. Would you mind just asking him? I will. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Oh, not for me. Thank you, Brett. I appreciate oh. it. No, no problem. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to warrants and minutes. And I'd like to report that I've approved payroll warrant PR 20 24 for the week ended May 16, 2020. Uh, warrant dated May 21st, 2020, in the amount of $1,367,121.19. Um, I also approved invoice warrant AP. 20 47, dated May 20th, uh, 21st, 2020, in the amount of $1,042,894.52, and also invoice warrant uh, AP 20-48, dated May 28, 2020, in the amount of $313,253.01. And I think I mentioned the last time, it's amazing on the uh, bill warrants, how long they are. But it's mostly uh, small school items where they're refunding athletic uh, fees, um, parking fees, all kinds of different fees they collect. 
transportation fees, but they are extremely long. But the those don't amount to a lot of money. But anyways, uh, move on to minutes. I'm not sure who's had a chance to review minutes. And as I look at you, Renee, because I know you're the the keeper of the minutes. Um, so I have to say, Brad, I, I haven't had time to uh, get through any one set um, just with the last couple of weeks and uh, um, the work that we've been doing on um, the Industrial Development Commission, so I apologize. But uh, not... I, I can guarantee you that I'll, I'll have at least two minutes updated that we've already reviewed with a new address <laughs> on them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, okay. I'd, I'd rather have you go through them and get them right for us and uh, then have to go back and correct them. So, I, I where I haven't completed all of my tasks, I can't blame you for doing things that we should all be doing anyways. So, I thank you that you, t you take so much time at the minutes. Because a lot of times, I'll be reading them, and if I'm not sure or something, I just assume it's my faulty memory. So. Um, the, the one thing too is I attended a webinar that uh, for the MMA that Lauren was conducting, and she had mentioned, you know, that that um, discussion of minutes came up too, and and it was actually related to public records requests. But one of the things that she said in there is that while we, you know, we have to be able to provide them minutes, if they're not approved, we can we can just list them as draft, and we can still provide those. I don't know if that applies to posting them online as well if we want to. I mean, I know we have the video there, um, but that's an option too if we. I mean, I'm expecting, you know, we'll get through the backlog pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And then maybe we can, as a go forward, uh, you know, on some of the less lengthy meetings, take 10 minutes if we haven't looked at the previous meetings minutes that we do it as part of the meeting. And then, okay. you know, that might be an option. I know okay. we have some lengthy meetings, so I don't want to say we do that all the time, but. That's fine with me. Whatever works with, for everybody. But I, I'd rather we take the time get them right, but possibly in this unit you should check to find out if they can be uh, put listed online as drafts just so that they're out there and then we could approve them as read. Can you take care of that for us, Mr. Units? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, next meeting agenda will be next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. We'll be discussing uh, basically town meeting, the location, time, and uh, articles. Hey, Brad, uh, I'm yes. sorry to jump. Did, uh, did Mary weigh in on the Slackman's report? I didn't hear. I didn't hear her. I'm good. Okay. I love that. I, fi I figured she'd, she'd let me know if, if I uh, snubbed her. So I would absolutely. I, I figured she I, might have kept herself on mute. Uh, <laughs> it's a possibility. <laughs> uh, I have much more faith in her to let me know I'm doing something wrong. Um, okay, so we've got the uh, next meeting date and time. And uh, unless there is any other further business, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, uh, Renee. Yes. Mary. Yes. Jack. Yes. And I'll also vote yes. Thank you, everybody. And I'll okay. see you Tuesday night.